Well, it's a very warm welcome back to second half independent of Tube Studio commentary from the game at the GTEC Community Stadium where it's uh, Brentford nil, Brighton and Hove Albion nil. Brighton had a penalty shell uh, in the last uh, seconds of the first half. Uh, VAR asked Andy Maddy to delay the uh, end of the first half so he could check the replay. He checked the replay and decided there wasn't enough in it. That's uh, the foul uh, from uh, Wissa on uh, Lewis Dunk. There was just a bit uh, too much contact from Dunk himself uh, in the initial phases of that uh, foul and the penalty wasn't given so Brentford can breathe a sigh of relief and they're on the attack straight away in the first seconds here down the left hand side Lewis Potter getting towards the edge of the area being uh, blocked here by Budanotte going back towards uh, Nathan Collins he then fires the ball into the box and it's Yarmoliak breaking into the penalty we're just taking too many touches may still be a chance for Lewis Potter before it's eventually cleared up towards the half and but maybe that's a signal of uh, Brentford's intent in the second 45 they didn't play uh, on the front foot for most of the uh, first 45 minutes we'll see if they can uh, match that start uh, for the rest of the half it's myself Paul Shabakovich and Tom McGarry taking you through the, through the uh, second half and uh, Tom we needed a response uh, from Edward I'll get your thoughts on that in a second because Jan Moliak now breaking forward tries to feed Johan Wisho breaks into the box he wants a penalty he's never going to get a penalty there and it's going to be a goal kick although the referee is still saying that we're going to check this one yeah they will VAR will have a will have a quick look but certainly at first glance it looks like Visser throws himself across the defender Van Hecker and uh, yeah, there's absolutely nothing in that for me. Are you a, you a little bit... Well, I, I don't think so, no. I, th I think that if, if Wister had got there just a little bit quicker, but the fact is that he's only trying to get contact with uh, Van Hecker rather than actually winning the ball. The ball was always too far away from Wister, I think. Yeah, so one ball over top, and that might be an opportunity for, uh, for Jao Pedro. Yeah, well, he, he was onside. He thought about uh, going for it first time. He just holds it up now. He's on the left-hand side of the penalty area. Not much of an angle for a shot, but he gets a cross in. It's over to Veltman, and Veltman puts it onto his left foot. It was inviting the effort... Just uh, lifts it over the bar in the end. Well, he's a right back hitting it with his left foot from the edge of the area. So the odds weren't in his favour, really. But it didn't look like too bad an effort. He certainly caught it sweetly, didn't he? His control slightly got away from initially. So he had to take it with his left foot. And he had to take it early. He's just leaning back a, a tad there, Joel Veltman. But as I say, the the, the purity of the stri strike was there. And it just flew over the top of the crossbar. Attacking intent from from both sides though at the start of the second half which is a sign of encouragement although I, I think I pretty much said the same thing at the start of the first <laughs> well absolutely we're just hoping that that uh, pace from the first couple of minutes of this second half can uh, be maintained uh, for the rest of the 45 Brentford won a free kick there on the right hand side Rusleff was brought down referee is not interested just to remind you no changes at half time Mark Flecken and goal for Brentford back three of Zanke Jorgensen Christopher Iyer and Nathan Collins Mads Rusleff and Keen Lewis Potter are the two wide men with uh, Matthias Jensen Vitaliano and Yeho Jomoliak as the uh, three in midfield Ivan Tony and Yo and Wister are the two up front. I'll do Brian's 11 and just seconds. They're pushing forward now. Are the uh, Seagulls here with uh, Buenanote? Holds it up in midfield. Goes uh, square to uh, Igor. Down the left hand side now. Gross and Adingra. Looking at uh, options inside the uh, penalty area. Going back towards uh, Igor again. Thought about the cross. Uh, just plays it short to uh, Pascal Gross. And he lifts it into the penalty area. Too high for uh, João Pedro. Headed away by uh, Christopher Ayer. But uh, Brighton still keep it alive here. Beleba down the right-hand side for uh, Veltman. To Adam Lalana. Veltman uh, back in towards uh, Van Hecke. Uh, Beleba playing it uh, back towards uh, Lewis Dunk. But Brighton still in Brentford territory here. Gross now over towards Eager on the uh, left-hand side. Things have slowed down a touch, but they are still uh, edging forward here with uh, Pascal Gross. He's about 35 yards out from goal. He tries to get that ball in towards uh, Bonanotte. His touch uh, gets it through to Baleba. Now it's with Lalana. Lalana trying to get across in. It's uh, sort of partially cleared by Collins. It's back into the box. Uh, João Pedro with the header, but it's uh, straight into the arms of uh, Mark Freckett. It's Bart, Bart Verbruggen in goal for Brighton. The back four of Joel Veltman, Paul Van, John Paul Van Hecke, uh, Louis Duncan, Igor Julio, Pascal Gross and Carlos Baleba. The holder midfielders with Facundo Bonanotte, Adam Lalana and Simon Adingra as the attacking midfield three. Uh, João Pedro is the front man. Seems to have a bit of... Uh, Caught in the back of the head there, João Pedro, but he's, he looks like he's okay. Yeah, he's just he's, he's trying to flick that header on, and he almost flicks his, the back of his head against the, the forehead of, of Matthias Jorgensen, who was, who was marking him, him tightly. A little bit of a sore one, but he's, a, he's quickly back on his feet and, and doesn't need to receive treatment. We just saw there in that last Brighton attack, that's kind of the pattern we saw for the majority of the first half, slowing things down, 
almost camped on the edge of the Brentford box, but never really looking too threatening. No, they just lacked that killer pass. But now Brentford, it opens up for them. And Ivan Tony, all oh, the ball, the pass from Jensen into Tony was probably just a little bit too short. So Tony couldn't quite take it on the run. He then tried to flick it in towards Wissa. It was cleared back into midfield. But Brentford come again now. It's Lewis Potter's ball in and not for the first time. His delivery into the box is either too short or too long. It's too short this time. And it's an easy claimer for Verbruggen. Yeah, it's a nice little shimmy on the left-hand side by Lewis Potter. Just to give himself the half yard to get the crossing with his favoured right boot but yeah again it, it was a poorly executed delivery Brighton tried to hit uh, Brentford quickly here down the left João Pedro won't get to that one though it's with uh, Christopher Ayer he goes uh, back to Fleck and long clear oh that's a nasty one there Igor Julio uh, jumping into uh, Mats Rusleff he's got his arms aloft like he can't see uh, he's done anything wrong there but the referee is going to just stop play here because the Bedford man might be down here after that one. Yeah, I mean, it, if you're being very generous, it's a strong challenge from Igor Julio. But as you say, he, he was never winning, winning the ball really there. He's, he's left a little bit on worse stuff. It's not the worst thing in the world. Well, actually, it looks a lot worse in the uh, in the in the slow motion replay there. He just barges right into worse left. For me, that probably should be a yellow card. There's, a, there's an elbow out there as well from uh, Igor Julio. He's been up against Royce left all night. He wants to get a, perhaps a little bit of an advantage. He's a much broader, much stockier man than his uh, opposite number. Brentford have taken the free kick with uh, Fleck and trying to pick out Wissa down the right-hand side, but it's just over hit, and it's into the arms of uh, Verbruggen. Rolls this one out for uh, Pascal Gross. 51 minutes gone. Still goalless here at the G-Tech. Arsenal still 2-0 two up. Two nil up against Luton. Manchester City against Aston Villa. 26 minutes gone in that game. City led after a goal from Rodri on 11 minutes. Uh, John Duran equalised uh, for Villa on uh, 20 minutes. And as I say, in the Arsenal game, it is 2-0 to Arsenal against Luton. Odegaard, and that's actually now been credited as the Hashioka own goal. The uh, the second goal for Arsenal in that one. We initially saw that it was uh, credited to uh, Rhys Nelson. And there's a uh, Brighton player down in midfield. Looks like it's Carlos Beleva, but he's picking himself up. Nothing too serious for him there. Uh, uh, Dingra now down the left-hand side in towards Adam Lallana. Back to uh, Pascal Gross, just uh, slowly creeping forward here. Brentford aren't pressing too high up the field. They are giving Brighton some license to get forward. It's Bonanotte now getting towards the edge of the D, playing it square to uh, Lalana. Adingra now trying to get away from, well, he got away from Russell. He couldn't get away from Yarmoliuk, who then dawdles on the ball really easily, robbed of it there by uh, Pascal Gross. And uh, Brighton now have it back here down the uh, left-hand side with Lalana. Just dropping a shoulder to get away from Yarmoliuk, plays it in towards Gross, who's uh, been closed down by Russell. Quick pass in towards Dingra. Back to uh, Pascal Gross. Lifts the ball into the penalty area, but that is catching practice there for uh, Mark Flecken. Wanted to bowl it out quickly, but just holds on to it in the end. But again, it's it's it, there's no end product from Brighton, but the build-up does seem to be that little bit more planned than it, do, than it does from Brentford's point of view. Yeah, it, it's tidy from Brighton. Methodical, I think, is a word we, we used on a, a couple of occasions in the first half, although they've got the ball back from a really poor clearance by Flecken. That's awful from Flecken. Buena Notte now uh, loses the uh, the ball at the edge of the area, uh, d dives in towards uh, Nathan Collins. That's going to be a booking uh, for the young Argentine as well. Just a little bit uh, too keen to uh, capitalise on that Brentford error. It was a terrible clearance from Fleck, and he held on to that for too long. And but not say he might have actually been frustrated because there was probably a little bit of a body check there from Jensen, which may have counted as half a foul, if you like. But then in doing that, he charges into uh, Collins, and there's no control there at all. And you can see uh, Roberto De Serbi hiding his face inside his uh, bench jacket there. He wasn't happy. Yeah, it, it probably is a yellow card, the challenge from Bonanotte. It's an honest attempt to to try and nick the ball when he realises he's, he's slightly overrun it and, as you say, may have been uh, blocked off uh, potentially, or he may feel he was blocked off by a, by a Brentford player. For, for me, it's it's less of a naughty challenge than the one we, the one we saw from Igor a couple of minutes ago. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that the Igor Julio challenge is more of a yellow card than a Buenonotte one, but it just sometimes depends on the, the circumstances and the way the referee's positioned. And uh, I say it's, uh, it's one where I think Bernanotte probably just about deserved the yellow, whereas Igor Julio definitely did. Brentford uh, making a bit of a mess of uh, trying to keep the ball inside their own half. And then it's uh, Baleba taking advantage here for uh, Brighton, going back towards Veltman. Cross now uh, back towards uh, Van Hecke. And uh, the visitors just quite happy to hold on to the ball again. But uh, after the first couple of minutes where Brentford tried to show some attacking intent, we're back to the uh, what we saw for most of the first half with uh, Brighton setting the pace. And uh, Thomas Frank said, I've got to try and do something to, to, to upset that rhythm, really. Yeah, it's difficult for Brentford. They have looked a threat when they've, when they've gone forward. But you feel they can't sit this deep for the, for the entirety of the second half. They manage it for the, most of the first. But you feel Brighton will start to create chances. 
bodies, defenders may tire for Brentford. They've done a lot of work off the ball, so I think it's a risky game plan to go like this uh, from here on out. Well, it is. I think that they've, they've got to try and do something to, 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 to step forward to actually see a bit more possession, just sort of hoping for a counter-attack when you're the home side already isn't, uh, isn't really the way to go. But uh, Brighton, for all the possession that they've had, they've not really been able to get as close to the box as uh, De Zerbi would have liked. They're still about 40 yards out from goal. Julio now pushing uh, forward. He got Julio over towards Adingra. He's got support there from uh, Gross on the left-hand side. He goes uh, back to Igor. Thought about uh, crossing it. It's with Gross now. Two Brentford players trying to close him down. Igor again, just on the angle, playing it uh, back towards Lewis Dunk. Dunk in towards Gross. Gross thought about uh, Cross, but again, no, no real options for him. Brentford are trying to do what they can to at least play the offside line outside their own penalty area. Really made things quite condensed inside the uh, Brentford half. They congested here, but uh, Dingra trying to find some space, pushing away from Jan Molia, gets the ball in towards uh, Lalana. There's a challenge there from Jensen, but it's still deflected to the path of Baleba. Brentford eventually get it away here down the left-hand side with uh, King Lewis Potter, but he runs uh, straight into the trouble in the form of Joel Veltman. And again, it's Brentford had enough time there to get rid of the ball, and they just didn't do it. Yeah, that's the problem. Brentford are not seeing uh, enough of the ball, so when they get it back, tired minds, uh, not quite having enough bodies or options forward in the in the more offensive areas. Uh, possession's turning over quickly, and again, if Brighton can build up that head of steam, as we as we saw at times, particularly towards the end of the first half, then you suspect they will start to create more more obvious goal-scoring opportunities. If it carries on like this, it, it just, just sheer weight of uh, possession is, is going to wear Brentford down. It's been a good five, seven minutes now, really, where Brighton have not really allowed Brentford to have any kind of a possession in the visitors' half at all. Beleba now down the left uh, for uh, Pascal Gross. He's got uh, Dingra there with him, but Gross plays a ball along the ground this time aimed at uh, Adam Lalana, and then as Jarmoliak tries to uh, bring the ball out for Brentford he goes down he lands on the ball and the referee says it's a handball against Jarmoliak I think everyone was expecting from the Brentford side was expecting a free kick but uh, credit to Mads Rusleff he wins the ball back from his side and again dawdles in, in how he gets rid of the ball Brentford on two occasions there had a chance to clear it and have lost it it's now with uh, Gross back towards uh, Baleba uh, just in front of the penalty area, he had uh, Johan Wisser for company. He plays it towards Lewis Dunk, uh, a bit deeper in midfield. Now it's Gross and Dinger again, down the left-hand side. Uh, Pascal Gross uh, in towards Lalana. One time, uh, João Pedro back to Lalana, but that's the wrong option. And Adam Lalana swearing at himself there when he realises just how bad that shot was. Yeah, they worked again really nicely, Brighton, but it, it feels a lot of hard work for, for very little reward. Again, it's a very... It's a very, not even half chance for Lallana. He's off balance, again, coming away from goal. It's a, it's a wild strike, way, way off target. I mean, for all the good, intricate play, moving it around, one-touch passing, they're creating very little. They are, and to say that the, the animated De Serbi there really was very animated when he saw that uh, last chance go uh, blazed over the bar in the way that it was. But uh, you get the feeling Brighton are going to get another chance soon because Brentford have just uh, won the ball back. And it uh, looks like... The uh, referee got in the way there, but he's not going to ha have a drop ball here, Andy Manley, because uh, Brent, uh, Brighton still have possession here in midfield. It didn't really affect what they were doing. They were still deep inside their own half. It's now down the right-hand side. Pascal Gross on the right this time being blocked here by Jensen. In towards Veltman. Back to Gross. Now Van Hecke. The pressure from uh, Jensen and uh, Wisser. Dunk over to uh, Igor now. Brentford at least are trying to press as high up the field as they can, but Brighton has still got the ball. It's now Lewis Dunk trying to play one over the top. That's well read, though, by uh, King Lewis Potter. And now uh, Janelt back towards uh, Zanka Jorgensen. In towards uh, Roslev, who does well to step away from Adingra. Finding a uh, pass to uh, Jan Moliuk down the uh, right-hand side. Players to uh, aim for at the edge of the area. Moliuk just holds it up, plays it in towards Matthias Jensen. Back to uh, Jeho Jan Moliuk. Towards Anka Jorgensen, Brentford perhaps just are quite happy to uh, hold on to the ball for a minute or two. They've not seen much of it in the second half, but they've got a bit of space in now down the right. Jarmolyuk lifting across into the penalty area, but it's there's no pace in the attack. It it was almost like Brighton were expecting that at some point the ball is going to be crossed in, and eventually it was. Yeah, again, it was it was almost uh, three or four passes from Brentford and. And they thought, well, we'll just lift it into the area, percentage ball, and that was always going to favour the goalkeeper. Bart for Bruggen's had very little to do in the, in the bright and goal bar, catching practice like that from, from looped crosses. Well, the, as there might be some uh, work here for Mark Flecken, though, at the other end, because uh, Brighton have just won the ball back here in midfield. It's with uh, Adingra. And uh, now Lalana in towards João Pedro. Thought about turning, but uh, just 
Too many Brentford players behind him. He goes back towards Beleba. Now he finds a quick pass down the uh, right-hand side for uh, Veltman, who uh, runs into uh, Keen Lewis Potter and uh, gives away a free kick. I mean, Veltman's not happy there. I think it's one of those where if uh, Keen Lewis Potter did the same thing to him, Veltman probably doesn't get a penalty there, but it's just enough contact to, to put him off the ball. Yeah, and I think he's more frustrated because it, it's his poor touch that presented the ball back to Keen Lewis Potter, and then that was compounded by uh, compounded sorry by the the coming together of the two players, and it's inevitable there that the free kick is going to be given. As you say, the other way around, it's not a penalty, but yeah, we know, we, we know when we see that that it's going to be given as a foul. As I was just wondering if uh, either manager might be looking to his bench sooner rather than later, and it looks like uh, Thomas Frank might be the, the first to blink. Yes, uh, Brian and Bumo, there were rumours that he might be starting the game of this season. That's even before we heard that uh, story about uh, Ivan Tony not only warming up, but Brentford have a throw on which they've taken quickly, and Tony finds uh, Wissa. Wissa back to Tony inside the penalty area, and there's going to be a free kick against the Brentford captain as Tony was sliding in inside the six-yard box. He has caught uh, Igor Julio and uh, the Brazilian is down. It's going to be a free kick to Brighton. Yeah, well, from nowhere, really. A throw down the left-hand side. A, a ball around the corner by Tony. Again, this the, the little fleeting moments of quality that he's shown in this game, linking up with this. So there's a bit of a coming together between Tony and Igor in the penalty area. And I think the fact that Igor stays down influences the decision as well. Free kick uh, given inside the six-yard box. But yeah, Vumbumo comes on. It'll be interesting to see if he potentially replaces Tony if there's a fitness doubt, if he's if he's more light for light with Visser or if uh, Brentford go for a for perhaps a change of formation. Well, I think the way that Brentford have struggled to, to have attacking for possession this evening, it really would be incredibly brave of Thomas Frank to now bring on a third striker, uh, you know, to, to sacrifice one of his midfielders. I, I do think it's likely to be uh, Tony or Wisser uh, that gets uh, replaced if there is a bit of a, an issue with Tony's fitness and it would be uh, him that gets the hook. But it's regularly on Damsgaard, uh, Baptiste, Godos and Bumo on Yeka Mope, uh, Kim Ji So, and goalkeeper Strakosha on the uh, bench for a Brentford. I do the Brighton bench just a second because the Seagulls are pushing forward here now with Zhao Pedro. He gets towards the edge of the area. He hits the deck. There was a strong challenge there from Vitali Yano. Referee not interested. Uh, Dingra still trying to win this ball back for Brighton and he manages it. Lalana now gets robbed of the ball here by uh, Jan Moliuk. And that's a terrible pass from the young Ukrainian. Gives that one away immediately. And uh, Brighton have the, the ball back here in midfield. They've got a fire. Uh, Pepuyon, uh, Estepinian, uh, Steele and Ciso, Moda, Lampte, Omahoney and Welbeck on their uh, bench. The ceiling are plenty for uh, De Serbi to choose from as well. Although that said, both sides have got a long injury list, missing a couple of uh, really important players. As Tom mentioned earlier, Mitoma is out, uh, Gilmore is out as well, March is out for Brighton and Brentford are missing uh, Pinnock, Norgard. Uh, Hickey, me, Henry and De Silva on the injured list at the moment but as it stands uh, Brentford just trying to chase the ball down here in midfield once again Brighton comfortable in it but still not able to get close to the penalty area no they, they're moving it sharply but yeah once they get near the penalty area they're, they're struggling to create I like the way Andy Madley's uh, refereeing this game though he's trying to to let it flow as, as there might be space for a Dingra down the left. There is good ball from Van Hecke to pick him out and a Dingra goes for goal it's uh, always uh, heading a little bit too high I think because there were so many tall players in, in sight of that ball, he's trying to lift it, really lift it, and then get it to dip onto uh, the bar into the top corner. But it's never really dropping. It's just rising and rising. Yeah, it's it's neither a cross or a shot in the end. As you say, he's wanting to whip it towards the far corner and ideally send it into the top corner himself, but at least give an opportunity of a touch-off friend or foe that might see it deflect into the back of the net. But... Yeah, too much on it, not for the first time. The final ball at both ends of the pitch lacking. Yeah, it has been a, a poor a poor in terms of quality in the final third of this evening, or certainly in terms of the passing, and that's another awful pass from Yehoi Armolio. We've just seen Mikhail Damsgaard being readied by uh, Thomas Frank, and I get the feeling that Damsgaard might, uh, that Damsgaard might be coming on for Armolio because he's having a bit of a tough time now, and that's the first change, in fact. Yeah, it makes sense. There's been a couple of uh, wayward passes from Armolio, still young and early in his in his development, but yeah, just maybe timing a little bit uh, as well. He'll come off and Damsgaard will come on. We know in fits and starts the quality he has. We saw him more before he joined uh, Brentford, but he still has that ability to unlock a defence and potentially be be that link player that, that Brentford have been la lacking in this game between midfield well, and attack. I, I thought he was nailed on as, as a starter for Brentford when they first signed him, but he's just not been able to discover that kind of uh, form. And uh, Brighton making a change as well here. Adam Lallana is off, and uh, Julio and Ciso is uh, odd in his place. That we mentioned uh, has uh, shown some real 
burst of quality, but has struggled with injuries this season. Yeah, and he might just be able to add a little bit more dynamism for, for Brighton going forward. There's been probably too many occasions for Roberto De Zerbi's liking where they've slowed it down on the edge of the box. Lallana and Gross probably guilty of that the most. Well, here come Brentford now. It's a ball in from uh, Jano from the uh, right-hand side. And just as that ball ha- lands inside the penalty area, Lewis Dunk is there first. And he's able to get enough of a deflection to uh, guide that ball away from Ivan Tony. I mean, that's really cool defending uh, from Lewis Dunk. The cross takes a deflection. He's back pedaling. He's got Tony behind him. He, he just arches those neck muscles and, and guides it back uh, towards his goalkeeper. Does well there, does uh, Lewis Dunk. And Brighton trying to get back on the uh, attacking initiative in this game. It's João Pedro in a more uh, deep uh, midfield role this time. Well, there are players uh, further ahead of him. It just uh, slows things down. Place it uh, back towards Igor, who's got loads of license to just uh, step forward here towards the edge of the uh, Brentford penalty. They really have got everybody back here, Brentford. Nobody in midfield trying to uh, disrupt what uh, Brighton are doing. It's now with uh, Dingra on the left-hand side. Back in towards uh, Julio. Square to uh, Lewis Dunk. And uh, he thought about playing it long towards the edge of the penalty area. Yano, though, uh, slides in. But no one no one up for Brentford at all. It was, it was only just over the halfway line. We can see second half possession stats, just 25% for Brentford, 75 for Brighton. As a long ball is played towards the right-hand side. It's a really good header there from Veltman trying to play it in uh, for a dinger, but that one's been cleared, and, it, and it's now a potentially a chance for Brentford. Oh, Tony on the halfway line touches that ball onto Jensen. Jensen's pass to Wisser is behind him, and uh, that move even before it had a chance to really develop has already stopped. It has, and again, Brighton can come forward once more. There were periods in the first half where you know, Brighton were dominating. When Brentford got it back, they were at least able to keep it for 30 seconds or so and, and sustain a bit of possession. That's not really happening in this second half. When they get it back, Brentford, you know, two or three passes maximum, and then, and then the ball goes Brighton's way once more. It does, although this occasion of uh, Bruggen's clearance is headed forward by uh, Zanker on the half line, so potentially a chance for Brentford with... Uh, uh, Mikel Damskar down the right-hand side. He does well to uh, hold off the uh, challenge of Adingra. Plays it into a whistle. Deliberately leaves it here for Tony. Tony then back heels it into Yanel. Yanel trying to get away from uh, Van Hecke. Brentford won a free kick. The referee gives himself a little mental replay in his mind before deciding that was a foul. Yeah, I, I don't think Andy Madley was sure there. I'm not particularly sure myself. Van Hecke certainly is the pitcher of innocence. He can't believe he's been penalised. Little back heel from Tony into the path of Yanel. And there's not much contact. There's a stumble uh, from the from the Brentford midfielder, we might get a look at this angle now. This, but this, he does catch his, his toe there. But I mean, wh- whether or not that's intentional, whether or not that's enough to say it's a foul, it's it's debatable, really. I mean, Brentford will certainly take the crumbs that they've been given here because uh, they've had so few opportunities uh, to get forward in this game. And uh, with this free kick being where it is, Ivan Tony might fancy his chances. Yeah, just wondering if it's on the on the threshold of being a little bit too far out for a direct strike. I mean, it is very central, which would give Tony an opportunity to go in either direction. You'd imagine he'll be pulling rank and, uh, and taking charge of this if it is a direct strike towards the, uh, the Bart for Bruggen's goal. And it looks like the way the wall for, for Brighton and the Brentford wall, both in front and behind that four-man uh, line from the Seagulls, is, is lining up. It will be a direct strike. It is. It looks like Evan Tony is uh, measuring this up to have a go for goal himself. He's got Yano just in front of him, potentially as a bit of a decoy. As Tom mentioned, there are two players... Uh, from Brentford just behind the wall but Tony now looks to lift it over the wall and he does lift it over the wall but he also lifts it over the bar never really got the dip on that one it was just rising and it's uh, in the end rather harmlessly away for a goal kick yeah way way off target there from Tony not his best and we haven't seen Brian and Bumo come on have we I mean five minutes or so before the dams guard changed Brentford's first of the night it looked like he was getting his final instructions from from Thomas Frank's coaching team looking at the clipboard and was was going to be arriving imminently but so far, he's still on the bench, still got his tracksuit on. He has, yeah, but uh, we'll see. I'm sure he's bound to be coming on in the next uh, few minutes. Brentford do need to do something to try and spark this game into life in their favour. We're over the three-quarter mark now. We're at 68 minutes. It is uh, Brentford nil, Brighton nil, and it will be Tom to take us through to full time. Yeah, thank you very much, Paul. Are we going to get some late drama in this game? Still goalless, and there's been sort of ingenuity. There's been there's been crosses into the box, a few efforts from, from range, but still... No real out-and-out out clear goal-scoring opportunities that, that are living long in the memory for either side. As Brentford come forward, Damsgaard down the right-hand side is cross-blocked by Dunk, but the Brentford substitute will watch the ball behind it, and it will be a corner, and just maybe over the last two or three minutes since the introduction maybe of Damsgaard, 
you can see Brentford are, are starting to have a, a little bit more of a toe in this game. They are. They're just starting to get more midfield possession and actually getting something in front of Brighton's box because uh, there was a good 10, 15 minute spell where everything was happening in Brentford's, Brentford's half exclusively. So the fact that they're able to get the ball away and at least have something in, in the opposition half is a start. And now they need a good delivery here from uh, Vitaly Yano. Collins forward from the back. Ayer, who scored in his last two games, forward from the back. Matthias Jorgensen in there as well, joining Ivan Tony. Plenty of bodies for Vitaly Yano to aim this left-footed in-swinging corner at it's towards the near post. It's a poor one, headed away comfortably by Baleba. He'll go and play for a throw on the far side. We haven't seen Matthias Jensen's long throw in this game as of yet, and right on cue, he's coming across. Well, it just shows you how few, uh, how little possession Brentford have had to not even want themselves an attacking throw on in front of Brighton's pedals the area, but they have that now, and Jensen, as he likes to do sometimes, he winds up for a long throw and then does a decoy with a short throw, and that's exactly what he's done there. Yeah, he's gone short to Janel, he'll lift a cross towards the far post, nodded down by Jorgensen, but... Can't see wrong there, the header, the the Dane, and it goes behind for a goal it's kick. poor from Jorgensen because he's not actually under that much pressure. He just sort of gently nods the ball down towards that near post. When you think there's got there's three or four players that he could try and pick out there uh, with a sort of header that if he goes square. But Brentford are now finally ready to bring on Brian and Puma. Looks like Sergio Regulon is getting ready to come on as well. Yeah, the Spaniard who was sent off against Burnley before the international break suspended for the game with Manchester United at the weekend and hasn't been able to force his way straight back into the starting eleven, but he's going to get a, an opportunity for the final 20 minutes or so, it would seem, alongside Brian Mbumo, who has had a couple of substitute appearances now since actually picking up a, a serious injury in the reverse match against Brighton uh, back in early early December, which is also the, the last time he scored. It is, yeah. He's had a, he's had a tough season in Brumo. In Brentford have had a, a number of injuries and they've certainly missed him all season, but here comes Lewis Potter. Yeah, down the left-hand side, deep cross towards the far post, not for the first time. Akeen Lewis Potter guilty of overhitting that cross and it'll be gathered by Igor on the left-hand side for Brighton. He feeds it forward to João Pedro, miscontrols. He might be tiring in the first game back in a, in a long while from his own injury layoff. Brighton's top scorer, Feltman. Into Buonanotte, he loses out to Nathan Collins, it breaks to Ivan Tony, back in into Nathan Collins, who just couldn't quite take the ball in his stride. Had that been the other way around, you'd fancy Tony would have been bearing into the penalty area. But now, at the other end, with Collins out of position, they're breaking forward with Enciso Brighton. He has to do it all himself, he curls a tame effort towards goal, well wide of the target, and he ends up crumpled in a heap on the edge of the penalty area. He does, yeah. It was a decent effort from Enciso, as you mentioned, he didn't really have too many options, he had to try and go it alone. But uh, the Paraguayan certainly felt as though he had uh, a half a chance to go for goal there. In the end, uh, his effort uh, was a very, very poor effort. It goes uh, a long, long way wide. Yeah, Phil Foden, incidentally, on the stroke of half time in the 8.15 kickoff in the Premier League, has put Manchester City back in front against Aston Villa 2-1 in first half stoppage time as the changes are now going to be made by Brentford and Bumo. And Regalon are going to come on. Keen Lewis Potter is one of the players being replaced, and Johan Visser is the other. Yeah, so it's like for likes all round. Uh, Sergio Regulon is going to play in that uh, left-hand uh, left hand side midfield role, and uh, Brian and Bumo coming on to replace uh, Johan Visser. I think he would have been far too uh, brave. In fact, reckless of Thomas Frank to try and have three forwards on the field, considering how little for service the two forwards have had in the game so far. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, and Regulon is a bit more defensive protection uh, down that left-hand side, and maybe a little bit more quality as well if his deliveries into the box. We'd, we'd mentioned that... Uh, King Lewis Potter had been slightly wasteful with some of his crosses. Yeah, double change now for Brighton as well with uh, looking like it's going to be a Dingra going off uh, alongside Buenanote and it's going to be uh, Welbeck and uh, Welbeck and Lamptey to come on. So in, in, in reverse of uh, Thomas Frank, Roberto de Serbi is actually going a little bit more attacking here. Yeah, he's uh, certainly uh, bringing on uh, Danny Welbeck. Whether he goes up front alongside João Pedro or one of those two plays slightly left of centre where Dingra was, Lamptey you'd imagine would be in the... Uh, on the right-hand side in, in the Bonanotti role, a completely different kind of player, though, to Bonanotti, uh, an actual right-sider, so that might give a little nat bit more natural width on that side of the pitch to Brighton. But double changes made there by both, uh, both sides in the final 20 minutes of this game. Will that see the pendulum swing one way or another? As a long ball forward towards Mbumo, brilliantly brought down by the newly introduced Brentford forward. He got a shot away. It was blocked off the heels of Dunk and then Mbumo brings down Joel Veltman and concedes a free kick. But he's on. He's a goal scorer and uh, immediately showing William there as he got in behind. He did. I think he's on side there as well. I think Van is just a, a step behind the, the, the Lewis Dunks. That probably would have meant he was level. 
But uh, the fact that uh, Dunk was always going to get there meant that uh, as uh, Mbuma went for the shot, a combination of uh, Dunk and Van Hecke get in the way. Yeah, they did well, actually, to get back in the end. The, the two, two, Bren, uh, two Brighton centre-backs is now in CISO for the visitors. Works the ball over the halfway line and out to the right-hand side with Joel Veltman, who can stride forward. He's got players in support, including NCSO, who gets it back off the, the Dutchman. Drives towards the edge of the Brentford penalty area. Works out to Lamptey, who's actually gone on the left-hand side uh, since coming on. He's going to try and take on Mads Rurslev. We sit, dinks a right for the ball into box, flicked on by NC. So looking for Jao Pedro, it's half cleared. Comes on the volley to Baleba, who sends it over the top of the target. And see, so perhaps unselfishly there again, maybe trying to be a little bit too clever. Couldn't quite get on the same wavelength as Jao Pedro. No, no, he couldn't. And uh, Baleba made his mind up far too early that he was going to take a shot and then couldn't really change his mind after that. And the effort uh, goes a long way wide. But it was a clever little move that from NC, so just to try and uh, flick that on. It's. Uh, sort of a slight technical player that he is, so using his head's probably not the first thing that you think of with him, but that was a very good move. Yeah, it's down the other end, and Bumo gets to the ball ahead of Veltman, will struggle to keep it in on the near touchline and wasn't able to do so. Jan Paul Van Heck has gone down actually in and amongst that. And looks a little bit winded, although in fairness to him, he's quickly scampered back to his feet and back into position as Veltman prepares to take this throw in. Deep inside his own half. We're into the final 15 minutes, bringing you independent off-tube studio commentary of this Premier League clash. It's still Brentford nil, Brighton nil. As Jao Pedro drives over the halfway line, rides the challenge of Janelt initially. He's then held up uh, by the Brentford midfielder, who is the uh, first Brentford player to go into the referee's notebook this evening. He is, yes, and I think it is, there's no argument there from Janelt, uh, done because there can't be. He's, he knows what he's doing there. He's trying to stop a, a, a move... To, Taking one for the team there, Vitaly, you know, and I don't think Thomas Frank will mind that too much just, just to try and kill the, uh, the, 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 the sting out, take the sting out of that Brighton attack. Bonanotte, who's now been replaced by Brighton, the only other player to have been cautioned this evening as Manchester City 2, Aston Villa 1 is now a half-time score in the 8-15 kickoff. Pascal Gross preparing to take this free kick. Ten yards or so inside the Brentford half. Brentford holding a very high line as Gross will switch it towards Lamptey on the left-hand side. Onto his right foot, delivers a decent looking ball into the box, headed away by Ayer, who got up above Van Hecker. He'll come to Enciso, but he has his pocket picked by Damsgaard, who couldn't quite link up with Mbumo. There's been some nearly moments like that, particularly for Brentford in this second period when they've pinched the ball back and they've done so again. Regulon on his toes, he's now driving forward. He's got Tony in support. He cuts in field the Spaniard, now gives it to his captain on the left hand flank. He's been backed up by Matthias Jensen. He gives it to the Dane, who Thinks about the delivery into the box. There's only Damsgaard and Bumo, both small players in the middle. Finds Tony instead. Regalon then with an attempted cross blocked by Van Hecker. And now, possibly, we might see a Matthias Jensen young, long throw. We might as well. There's been so few opportunities for Brentford. A short throw here and then trying to get it into the box probably isn't going to be the best option. Although Jensen doesn't seem to be taking much of a run-up at this stage. Yeah, he's not winding back, is he? Maybe uh, resisting that temptation. Although now he is stepping three or four yards back and it looks like he will be trying to hurl this one into the box, and he certainly does have a, a long throw, the Denmark international. As it does get aimed in towards the corner of the six-yard box, a claim to have a push in the back of uh, one or two of the Brighton defenders. I think it was Veltman who was looking for the foul, and, and belatedly again, Andy Madley gives the free kick Brighton's way. Yeah, Christopher Ayer with that, so what me look on his face, but I think he knows what he was doing there. He was trying to find a bit of space inside the box, and uh, João Pedro, I mean, in fairness... I don't think Aya does anything wrong there, but uh, it, it might have just been the fact that there was a little bit of activity in and around him, and uh, the referee was always going to give that once he'd seen that there was a bit of a, a push in the back. But Brentford have got to try and do something to make that ball stick further up the field. Although, just as I say that, Regulon's given it away. Yeah, he's presented it straight to Veltman. He's out of position, Regulon. He does well to get back and hold Veltman up. Veltman has to go into Baleba, and now across it goes to Igor, and Brighton will chance their arm down the left-hand side. Gross back into Igor Julio. Now Baleba... Is it moving out to Welbeck? Just about his first touch finds Veltman. Resists the temptation to cross. Holds on to it and works it instead back in field. Igor across to Gross. He's got Lamptey outside in Pascal Gross, but he'll go back into Igor. Again, patient build up play from Brighton. Igor, though, might hit this. He certainly caught it with plenty of venom there. It was swerving in the air, but I think in the end it. It goes comfortably wide of Mark Flecken's goal. It did, but he does catch this. He really laces this one to Zigo Julio, but it never really had that, so that dip. It was always angling away from goal. But uh, certainly, 
And it's, uh, it wasn't a bad effort to, to take on. He's had a good game, Igor, who'd have been, been involved in quite a few Brighton moves this evening. Yeah, he has, and it, it was a, a bit of a why not moment. No, no one was closing him down. No one was really moving in front of him, and it was probably worth chancing his arm. We had uh, quite a few shots on the edge of the area in the first half, in particular from Brighton. We haven't had that many, really, shots full stop in this second period, as Ivan Tony is uh, just uh, tying his boots in. Again, a message, I think, from Thomas Franco members of the Brentford coaching team on the sidelines as Flecken sends the goal kick forward. There's then a free kick given away. Jensen has been penalised in the middle of the park. So another set piece going Brighton's way. We're approaching the uh, final 10 minutes of this contest and we're still waiting for the deadlock to be broken. Brentford nil, Brighton nil. Brighton have worked the free kick short. Van Hecker goes into his skipper Lewis Dunk inside the centre circle. Just rolls the ball over the top of his foot two, three times before finding Igor and now Lamptey on the left-hand side. Links up with Gross, back into NC so he can hit them. He certainly strikes that one well. Straight down the throat, though, of Flecken who gathers at the second attempt. He was never moving enough, I think, to trouble Mark Flecken. And Ciso is uh, right foot to shooting from the left-hand edge of the penalty area and he's aiming at that near post, if you like, so it's not really got enough movement on it to really trouble Mark Flecken. Yeah, decent strike, though, from NC so he's added a little bit of extra attacking flair and impetus since coming on midway through this second half as offside flag goes up against Ivan Tony, who, like a lot of the uh, Brentford players, certainly the attacking ones, has, has drifted out the game more and more as this second half has developed. If anything, he's sort of drifted in a few times and he's sort of been out of the game most. most I mean, it, it's, it's, not, it's not been a good game from Tony, but then I'm not going to blame him individually as he come right now with Welbeck from midfield. Yeah, nice touch in to Danny Welbeck by Jao Pedro. He's trying to just work a, an angle for himself there, Danny Welbeck, but credit to Vitaly Yano, who I think's had a, a pretty good game in front of the Renford back line, just uh, holding him up and pinching, pinching the ball back. Defensively, you know, Brentford have sat deep, but I, I think They've done pretty well to nullify the threat of Brighton, and those defensive midfielders in particular, Yannel, I would say, uh, uh, play pretty well. They have. They've needed to. I think that's been noticed in the last few games uh, from uh, from Brentford fans' point of view that their central midfield has improved. It's been a bit lightweight. It's been one of the major factors for Brentford's struggles this season um, is the fact they've been a little bit too open through central midfield, and there is a little bit more resilience about them this evening, but I suppose the byproduct of that is that they lose a little bit of that attacking flair. Nathan Collins driving forward and trying to provide that attacking flair. The central defender he ran a long way just couldn't quite flick it into a teammate once he made it into the penalty area but Veltman's been forced to to clear it out of play for a throw and he's he stayed down as well the the Brighton fullback he's taken his boot off I think it's just a case of him needing to relace rather than I, rather I, than any I, injury. I, I, to me it looked like his boot was done up I think he just wants to buy his side a, a minute or two here just because Brentford were starting to uh, to come forward on mass and uh he, he's, I mean, literally, we're watching him taking the, the laces out of the, the shoe and then putting them back in and then before he ties them up again. So, uh, yeah, it's a strange one, that, from, uh, from Veltman. But uh, footballers, they say, they'll adapt. As soon as uh, one form of time-wasting is outlawed, they'll find another way to do it. Yeah, absolutely. They're just uh, killing any of the momentum that the Brentford were potentially looking to build up. But they do still, the, the home side, have another opportunity with a Matthias Jensen long throw. They didn't have any, really, in the opening 70 minutes of the game, but they're starting to come... Uh, quite quickly now as he hurls it into the box. It's flicked on at the front post, cleared away at the far stick, but Brentford could look to build again. Regalon goes back out to Jensen on the left-hand side. He tries to flick it up towards Ayer, who stayed forward from the initial set piece, and it drops to Christopher Ayer on the edge of the area. He plays it to Janel, back out to Jensen on the left. Nice turn from Matthias Jensen, whips a deep ball towards the far post. It's too deep, but it will be kept alive on the right-hand side by Damsgaard, who links it with Brian Mbumo. Umo then has to settle for a throw, and I wonder if Jensen will come across now to the right-hand flank and, and do another long one. He should try one. I think that uh, Brentford from open play haven't been particularly threatening, so anything they can do just to try and develop a move, just to try and get that ball to stick in the penalty, it's going to be worth a try. Yeah, as Rurslev looks like he is going to leave the ball, so you'd imagine that is Matthias Jensen coming across from left to right as Brentford having a sustained play inside Brighton's defensive third, which hasn't happened too often, particularly in this second half but maybe just starting to ask one or two questions of the of the visitors from a defensive point of view and this will be a another question as Jensen looks to hurl this into the box Frank and Yecker I think is stripped and ready for action for Brentford as well as it's flicked on by Ayer at the front post so it comes off the head of Lewis Dunk who I think again was being ultra cool and calm there and 
I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and say he was deliberately nod nodding that back to his goalkeeper. I I'll agree with you. I think uh, the, the way that he's done that a couple of times already this evening makes me think that he was planning on doing that. He does trust himself with those reverse headers and they've been very effective. Yeah, took the uh, sting out of the... Oh, it could have been a, a nervy situation for Brighton as Lamptey has it down the left-hand side now for the visitors. Looking to run at Mads Rerslev and, and take on the fullback and deliver a cross towards the far post that did just have Mark Flecken scrambling a little bit back on it on his goal line. I think he was always relatively comfortable that the ball was going to land on the top of his netting as that change is now going to be made by Brentford and indeed it will be Frank Onyeka coming on and won't be seeing any more Matthias Jensen long throws in this game because he's been replaced. He has been replaced. It's rare for Jensen to play a full 90 minutes just with him being that midfield engine for Brentford. He normally does get to the hook at some point before the end. I mean, he has made it uh, probably a little bit longer than, than normal here in this uh, this game this evening. And um, just seeing that as well. I mean, there, there was another... I don't, know if, I don't know if there was a mistake there from our... Uh, in fact, if I take it all back, I'm just trying to work out why we saw uh, another number 15, but it's all because Brighton have also made a change here late on. And uh, it looks like they've replaced Joel Veltman with the Polish international uh, winger, Jakub Moder. So that's quite a, an attacking change here from De Ser, But He's actually trying to expand his side's attacking options here late on. Yeah, Moder coming on. You'd imagine uh, Lamptey yeah, Lamptey will go to right back. Yeah, he's gone from left wing to uh, right back, which underlines his... A versatility and, and Modair is going to play in front of him actually so see so looks like he's gone from the left and, and certainly Welbeck since he's come on he's gone up front alongside Jao Pedro who's in possession now linking up with Danny Welbeck Welbeck in behind what a block that is from Christopher Ayer that Pedro then follows up with the header that goes straight into the gloves of Flecken but that was a goal saving block from Christopher Ayer He's becoming more and more popular at uh, the GTEC in recent months. Christopher Ayer really does play with his heart on his sleeve. He's scored important goals. He's made important challenges. And that potentially is a, a goal-saving challenge as Roberto De Zerbi. He is uh, very animated there. He knows how close his side were to potentially scoring a late winner. Yeah, that is a rare moment, despite all their possession, where Brighton have got in behind the Brentford defence. And it looked like Welbeck was going to curl that one into the far corner until it's not just a lunging, throwing body in the way there from Christopher Ayer. He deliberately lifts his leg up as he's sliding into to block where he thinks the ball is going to go. It go. It's a really, really effective piece of defending. Yeah, 19 shots to five in this game in favour of Brighton. They lead 6-2 in efforts on target. So it's perhaps no surprise that this hurt be so furious that his side is still nil-nil in this game. Yeah, based on those statistics, it's hard to argue that Brighton haven't been the, the better side and they'll be more disappointed if it does finish level, you would you would think, but they just haven't created enough clear goal-scoring opportunities. Although that one there for Danny Welbeck does underline that they have that ability and there is still time. Three minutes plus stoppage time remaining at the end of this game. Brentford nil, Brighton nil. It's Julio Enciso for Brighton down the left-hand side. Shows too much of it there in the challenge to Damsgaard and the last touch comes off. And see, so it looks like he's trying to overact that situation. I think he probably knows that the last touch came off him and the throw-in will be Brentford's. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the, the expression is that he almost can't believe it. How could that be a throw-in against me? But, uh, yeah, I mean, Bright Brighton just trying to respond a little bit with Brentford having a couple of half chances in the last 10 minutes, although that brilliant chance uh, just stopped by Ayer a few moments ago uh, would have suddenly woken Brighton up to the fact that they're still very much uh, in with a chance of taking all three points in this game. Yeah, absolutely. It's still there for both sides. You know, a point just isn't the worst result in the world for either. You'd probably suggest, but this is... It's there, someone, if someone really wants to, to take a chance, if we can see a, a moment of quality that hasn't really been there on a, cons on a consistent basis in this game for either team, then, yeah, one point could be turned into three. As for Bruggen sends a, a long ball forward, that's not going to be the moment of quality, though. That's going to run through to his opposite number, Flecken, who, under pressure from João Pedro, has to go first time forward towards the halfway line. Igor miscontrols, but then he's strong in the challenge with Onyeka, and he comes away with it fairly, he judges the referee. Igor will go to Gross. Gross into the feet of João Pedro on the left-hand corner of the Brentford box. He's forced out to Enciso. Twist, turns, works the ball infield to Baleba, slightly behind him, but he's held onto the ball. Dunk back to Enciso. Enciso can twisting, turning into Carlos Baleba. Moves it forward towards Modda. It comes back to Modda from Welbeck. His shot, though, is blocked by lunging challenge there from Vitali Janelt and then Tony and Van Hecker slide in for the ball and I think the throwing decision rather than the free kick is, is Brighton's. 
Uh, yes, it is. Yeah, quick throw taken in by Lamptey back towards uh, Van Hecke, but we're now into the last minutes of the 90. Interesting to see how much injury time there'll be. I'm not expecting too much, actually. Maybe four minutes max, maybe not even that. Yeah, it's only really been substitutions, hasn't it, in this second half? Not Physio's not been on once, has he? No, he, no, he hasn't. And obviously, we've had no goals to, uh, to, uh, to slow proceedings down in that regard. So, yeah, four minutes, possibly, which in these days is, is not too many at the end of a, a second half as Gross plays it into Jao Pedro. It's back with... Pascal Gross again, Jao Pedro getting involved, feeds it towards Welbeck, or miscontrolled by Jorgensen, it falls for Danny Welbeck, out to Lamdi, can he work a shooting angle, his shot is blocked, it comes to Jao Pedro who turns, hits it quickly, it deflects behind, and I think it may well have run for a Brighton corner. It does, Jao Pedro turns to that uh, left-hand corner as uh, the Brighton players look, because that's where the Brighton fans are, just trying to get a little bit more noise out of those uh, travelling supporters as we now hit injury time, it's going to be an outswinger from Pascal Gross. Yeah, it is there. Uh, Going to be a sting in the tail at the end of this game for either side. Brighton looking the more likely at the moment. Gross, hand in the air, right-footed, out-swinging delivery. It's headed towards goal by Danny Welbeck, but always just veering a couple of yards wide of the target. Yes, it is. Just three minutes, so a total of four minutes of added time in this game. Uh, which, considering uh, what we normally expect in the Premier League these days, is actually very efficient. It, it is, although I suppose we had an extra couple of minutes on top of that with the VAR did, yes, call. Yes, absolutely. That, that bizarre the the VAR situation at the end of the first half, if you, if you weren't listening, that uh, uh, essentially the referee was about to end the first half, then he was called to check for a VAR review for a potential penalty for Brighton. And unusually, when the referee normally goes to, to see the monitor, the decision goes uh, the way of the, the side that feel they should get the foul. But on this occasion, the referee said there was no foul. Yeah, and as it stands, that's the, the, the major talking point of this game with just over two minutes of a stoppage time left to play. Yeah, and also I suppose uh, based on how defensive a game it's been, uh, the TV pictures we're getting, they've uh, named uh, Christopher Iyer as the man of the match, centre-back. Yeah, I can't begrudge that as well. That, that last block he did against Danny Welbeck probably sealed the deal. As I say, I think Jan has been good in front. Maybe the, the yellow card he pick, he's picked up has gone slightly against him. But yeah, Brentford defensively, that's probably where you'd be looking at as the uh, for, for the for the man of the match, Brighton have been the more progressive of the two teams, but I think they've just lacked a bit of uh, quality in the final third. And speaking of lacking quality, there, really poor pass from Frank on Yeka goes straight out of play for a Brighton throw. 90 seconds of stoppage time remaining. Igor will take this throw for Brighton, but it's midway inside the Seagulls' own half. Not exactly where they want the ball. As both managers look a little bit pensive, dare I say, resigned to. This finishing nil nil. That's a good flick though by Nciso in behind Welbeck. Might have an opportunity. He's got support from Modern. Welbeck might go himself and he drives towards goal. He goes with the outside of his right boot. It's always just arcing away from that left hand corner of Mark Flecken's goal. That was the opportunity there for Brighton to win the match. But Welbeck hasn't found the target. He hasn't found the target and he should be passing this. If he tees it up for Modder, then it's, a, it's an easy tap in for Modder. It's not actually, a, it's a very good effort from Welbeck outside of the boot on the run. But uh, the, uh, the angles, the odds were always against him there and he should have looked to pass it. Yeah, the outside of the boot needed to be to curl it around the corner for Modder running in. It would have been a difficult pass for Welbeck to execute. He was on the run, on the stretch with defenders around him. But yeah, it was a, a case of what might have been there for. Brighton's experienced centre forward as Gian Pedro, Brighton's other forward on the pitch, is penalised for a little bit of a, a nudge into the back of Nathan Collins. Went to the final 30 seconds and a stoppage time. And it, it looks like Paul it is going to finish goalless. It is, yeah. Nice little chat there from Thomas Frank and Roberto De Serbi just before the, uh, the full-time whistle. As I say, uh, Thomas Frank does, does have a habit of robbing up some managers the wrong way, but he seems to be uh, OK with the Roberto De Serbi this evening. It's, it's, been a, it's been a tough evening for Brentford, I think, but... This same Brentford team, I think, two or three months ago, lose this game. I think that there, there is just that little bit more resolve about them this uh, in, in the last month or so. Yeah, showing a, a decent, uh, a bit of a character, really. They've drawn with Chelsea, Manchester United in the last couple of weeks. The draw of United in particular, they probably deserve to win this, win that one. But they've they've dug in and I mean gritty in this game as they send a long free kick forward. It's been cleared away by Brighton. And Andy Madley does indeed blow his final whistle. So. Goalless, goalless at the GTEC Community Stadium. Nothing to separate Brentford and Brighton. It finishes nil-nil.